Wait, are we videoing yet? Ooh. I think it's crooked. Apparently, I'm crooked. Hello, out there in Facebook land. There we are. Hello. Hello. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yay, yay, yay. That means Bridge Kids Bible Break. All right. We will wait until people start joining us. Oh, there's three people. I don't know who's here, though. It's Wednesday. That's Bridge Kids Bible Break Day. Yay. Oh, there's Paige and Julian. Hello, Paige and Julian. Wednesday is quickly becoming my favorite day of the week. Hi, Brady. There's Brady all the way from Nebraska. Hi, Braids. Um, Wednesday is quickly becoming my favorite day of the week during this whole craziness um, because that's the day I get to see you guys. Usually Sunday is my favorite day because that's the day I get to hang out with you guys. Um, but right now it's Wednesday because I get to see you on Bridge Kids Bible Break. I'm excited. Oh, there's Miss McKenna. Hi, McKenna. Hi, Miss Maggie. There's Miss Maggie too. All right. Shall we? Oh, and Aiden. Aiden just sent me a message and said you're here. Hi, Aiden. Hi, Ember. Oh, it's good to see everyone this morning. It's good to see your names over there. How are you guys? How's your week going? Um, those of you that have been sending me messages on Marco Polo and I've been sending messages back, you know that I've been working on a huge bathroom project. Um, <clears throat> we pulled everything out of the bathroom, toilet, sink, um, cabinets, flooring, everything out of there. Good morning, Karis and Catherine and Miss Rachel. Um, we pulled everything out of our bathroom. It was a huge um, project. I actually pulled it all out all by myself with a crowbar and a hammer. Raw. <laughs> um, anyway, so today while I'm doing Bible break, my husband Matt is at home and he's putting down the floor and he's putting up the wall. So I'm excited to show you guys on Marco Polo what we've been doing. It's been a project, but I hope you guys have had a good week. Hi, Molly. I miss you too. Um, I hope you've had a good week. I've had a good week too. It's been um, very productive. Um, did you guys watch church on Sunday morning? Did you see that silly pirate? It was pretty goofy, huh? It was really funny. I like the outtakes. They were they were the best. But I do, I miss all of you guys. I miss getting to see you. Um, I'm praying so hard that we all get to see each other again soon. Maybe not the way we want to, but maybe so we can just see each other. That would make me really happy. I would love to be able to hug you guys. I actually saw Eve and Sophia last night. Do you guys know Eve and Sophia? Um, I saw them last night when I was uh, at the chiropractor's office. Um, they were next door and I got to see them and say hello and wave from a distance. And it was really good to see them. Um, anyway, I miss you guys, but let's get started. So welcome to Bridge Kids Bible Break this morning. Um, I'm excited to share with you some stuff that I've been learning this week and last week and my whole life. But it's been really, I've been learning it a lot lately. Um, even more so than normal. So I want to talk to you about some of those things. Do you remember last week at Bridge Kids Bible Break, we talked about a few things that we can't see, but we know they're there. We can't see them, but we can see what they do. Who remembers those two things we talked about last week? There were two things we talked about. Oh, good morning, Goodrich family. Good morning, Ava, Billy, Mikey. Hi, guys. Save those hugs for me. All right. And Aubrey and Weston. Hi, guys. Um, anyway, so who remembers? Get, comment in the comments. Who remembers um, those two things we talked about last week at Bridge Kids Bible Break that we can't see them, but we can see what they do? We can't see them, but we know they're there. Hmm. I wonder what those things were. I'll give you a hint. One of those things is blowing around today. We talked about the wind, you remember? We talked about we can't see the wind, but we can see what the wind does. We can see that it blows the trees. It sometimes moves our hair. We can feel it on our faces, but we can't see it, right? And the other thing we talked about on Wednesday 
was God. We can't see God, but we know God is there. We can see what God does and we can see and we can feel him and we can um, know that he's there, but we can't see him, right? So we're gonna talk about, um, so I think, yep, the wind, there we go. I think, I think we're a little delayed in my talking and your commenting. So you're right, the wind is one of those things that we can't see, but we know it's there. Um, and God, how do, we, how do we know God's there? We can feel God's love and we can see what others do through God's love. And we also can see what we do through God's love. Uh, McKenna got it right. I just saw McKenna's comment over there. She said, God's love. That's something that's right. We can see God through God's love and through his love through others and through his love through us as we show it to others. Now we're going to talk about another thing this week that we can't see, but we know it's there because we know we can see what it does. So we're going to talk about this word. Who knows this word? Faith. That's right. We're going to talk about faith. Now, I have a friend named Faith, and I can see her, and I know she's real. I can I can hug her. I can touch her. I know she's real. I can see her with my eyes. But this is not this is not a person named Faith. This is the word named Faith. So we're going to talk about faith because um, we can't see it, but but it's something that we know is there, right? And there's a couple other things, and we'll get to those. Um, so let's go. Oh, and here's the other thing. Uh, that we can't see, but we can feel it. Fear, right? You can't see fear because it's an emotion. It's a feeling. You can't see it, but you can feel it and you know it's there. Sometimes it makes you do things like scream or shake or hide in fear. So we can't see fear, but we know it's there because we can feel it. We can't see faith, but we know it's there because we can feel it and we can see what it does. Now, another word is doubt. Now, doubt and fear sometimes go together. Sometimes when we're so scared and we're so fearful, we doubt. Okay, now we're going to talk about those in a minute. All right, remember those words, faith and fear and doubt. Okay, remember those words. Now, we're going to go to our Bible and we're going to read our story out of our Bible today because this is the Bible break, so we always read a story, right? And we all, we're gonna hear our story out of the Bible today. Now, is this just any old story? Is it just a story I made up off the top of my head? Nope, it's in my Bible, so I know it's true. Right, all right, so this Bible story today is from the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are the first four books of the New Testament. They're called the gospels because they tell us the good news about jesus that's right so this bible story is found in matthew chapter 14 verses 22 to 32. we'll leave that up there for a second so you can write it down if you want or you can try to find it in your bible and then i'll read it from my bible matthew 14 22 through 32. i wonder if i can stick this on my bible there you go, now you can see it while I'm reading it. How's that? All right, so this is about when Jesus walked on the water. One of my favorite stories, it's so cool. All right, ready? Then Jesus and his followers got into a boat. Oh, I'm sorry, then Jesus made his followers get into the boat. Jesus didn't get in with them. He told them to go ahead of him to the other side of the lake. And Jesus stayed there to tell all these people he could go home. Now, remember when I talked about Jesus would preach and all these people would show up to listen to him because they loved to hear what he had to say and they wanted to hear what he had to say. So the crowds were getting so big that the disciples were like, we're never going to be able to get out of here. And so Jesus said, get in the boat, go to the other side of the lake, and I'll meet you over there. He wanted to stay and tell the people to go home. So after Jesus said goodbye to his disciples, he went alone up into the mountain to pray. Hmm, do you remember when Jesus went up to another hill or garden to pray right before he died? Jesus liked to go up in the hills. He liked to go in the mountains. I think Jesus would really love Colorado, don't you? Because he could go up in the hills and the mountains and pray. So he went up to the hills alone to pray, and it was late at night, and Jesus was there all alone. 
Now, by this time, the boat was already almost to the other side of the lake. It was very far away and it was having trouble because there was a big giant storm and the waves were crashing and the wind was blowing against the boat and it was rocking it around. Have you ever been in a boat when there's big waves? Oh, it makes me bull. It's not good. Um, and it rocks and rocks and rocks and it makes you move and everything on the boat slams to the sides and moves around. That was the kind of bad storm it was. So the wind was blowing and the waves were huge. And between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning, they were on this boat in the pitch black. There was no light. There was no sunshine. There might have been a moon, but it doesn't say that. And between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus's followers were still in the boat. Jesus came to them. Now Jesus was on the shore and the boat was way out in the middle of the lake. How did Jesus get there? The Bible says, he walked on the water. What? He walked on the water. Now here's a picture about what I'm talking about. Jesus walked on the water to get to his disciples. And when his disciples saw him walking on the water, they were scared. They were afraid. They had fear. They were afraid and they said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus quickly spoke to them and he said, have courage. It's me. Don't be afraid. And Peter said, we're going to pretend this is Peter. Peter said to Jesus, he said, Lord, if that's really you, then tell me to walk on the water. Tell me to come into the water. And you know what Jesus said? He said, well, come on, Peter. What? Jesus is walking on the water. And Peter says, if that's really you, tell me to come. And Jesus goes, well, come on, Peter. Hmm. So Peter, here's the, here's the part of the story I love. So Peter left the boat and walked on water. Not only did Jesus walk on the water, Peter walked on the water. How you might ask, cause that's what I asked when I read this story the first time. Peter left the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. But when Peter saw the waves and the wind and the big storm, and he started to look around, guess what happened? He sunk. He started to sink and he shouted, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. And Jesus said to Peter, Peter, your faith is so small. Why did you doubt? And after Peter again, Jesus got into the boat, the winds stopped and the waves became calm. Isn't that cool? These guys are hanging out in the boat way out in the middle of the boat in the river. I mean the lake way out in the middle of the lake and Jesus walks to them on the water. Not only that, but Peter says, I want to do it too. And Jesus says, come on then let's walk. And Peter walked. Now when Peter had his eyes on Jesus, he was walking on the water. What happened when Peter looked around? He sunk, right? Okay. I'm going to dig into that a little bit more. I love that story. And Miss Maggie put the um, the scripture reference over here in the comments so that you guys could find that story in your Bible. Maybe you'll want to read it tonight. Maybe you can read it out loud to one of your siblings or your parents. All right. So did anyone hear? I told you guys to listen for some words. Did anyone, anyone hear the word faith? I did. Did anyone hear the word doubt? I did. Did anyone hear the word afraid or fear? Mm -hmm. In fact, Jesus said to Peter in the same sentence or in the same statement, he said, your faith is so small, Peter. Why do you doubt me? Why do you doubt? You've seen me. You know me. You, Peter could see Jesus with his eyes, couldn't he? We can't see Jesus with our eyes, but Peter could. And so Jesus is like, really? Your faith is so small that you can see me with your eyes and you still can't believe me? Why do you doubt? So we heard all those words, right? We heard af afraid, we heard doubt, we heard fear. So let's talk about that. Now, the dictionary says that faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So faith means I am absolutely sure. I'm absolutely sure of whatever you're sure of. I'm absolutely sure I have no questions. Hmm, now, doubt is the opposite of faith. Doubt in the, in the dictionary says a feeling of uncertainty. Hmm, you're not certain or a lack of conviction. So faith says, I'm absolutely sure. I have no questions. And doubt says, I'm just not sure. Right? Okay. 
So you know what? Fear, I told you this earlier, fear is a sometimes related to doubt because a lot of times when we have a lot of fear, that makes us doubt, right? It makes us wonder what's going on. Now, Peter was the same. Peter was afraid of the storm um, and the waves, and that made him doubt. So he had fear of the storm and the waves. It made him doubt Jesus. And what happened? He sunk, right? Okay. Now, when Peter had faith, he walked on the water. When Peter doubted, he sunk. So when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he couldn't do what Jesus wanted him to do, right? That's right. Now, how did Peter get back up out of the water? He just kind of popped up, right, on his own. He was like, oh, I'm sinking. I think I'll pop back up into the boat. No, that's not what Peter did. How did Jesus get, or how did Peter get back in the water? Well, the Bible says, when Peter shouted, Lord, save me, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter and pulled him back up on the water. So how did Peter get back up out of the water after he sunk? With Jesus's help, right? He couldn't get out of the water. He needed help. So I'm going to show you guys a little experiment here. Give me a minute to adjust the camera so you can see it. All right, hang on. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is water. We're going to pretend this is our lake from the story, okay? This is the lake that Jesus and Peter were on, all right? Now, I'm going to show you something here. What is this? This is a, it's a paperclip, right? Just a normal, plain, plain old ordinary paperclip, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you this. And you'll have to comment in the comments, all right? Miss Maggie will help you comment. Can a paperclip float on water? Can a paperclip float? What do you think? Go ahead and comment over there. Can a paperclip float? Hmm. Well, let's see. Some of you might think a paper clip can float. Some of you might think it can't. I'm going to show you. Oh, did that float? Nope. See any paper clips on the top of that water? No. Nope. Where are the paper clips? They're all. Ah, it's hard to see from where you guys are. All the paper clips are on the bottom. You can't see them. So. There's Neum and Tate. Hi, Neum and Tate. So all of these paper clips, can they float? No. Can you see them all? There you go. Now you can see them all on the bottom. All those paper clips are on the bottom. They can't float, right? Hmm. You're right. They can't. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here. If I take this paper clip and I fold it out like this, fold it out like this, And I take another paper clip and I go like this. I put the paper, whoops, that one sunk. I put this paper clip on that paper clip. Okay, can you see how it's on there? That paper clip is on that paper clip. Now watch this. Let's see, I might have to come a little bit down here. Let's see if you guys can see. Can you see? Here we go. Watch this. Let's see if I can do it. Do you see that? Paperclip is floating. Can you see it? You see that paperclip? I'll do it one more time. Let's see if I can put this on there. Okay. See how all those paper clips are in the bottom, but that one's floating? All right, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna take this paper clip, I'm gonna put this one on top. Can you see how those paper clips are floating? Now, did those paper clips float by themselves? No, they had to have help. This guy had to help them float, okay? All right, now I'm gonna show you this. So this is gonna represent doubt or fear, okay? So when Peter was walking on the water, he couldn't do it himself. He needed Jesus's help, just like these paper clips needed this to help them right okay let's go let's do one more in there so you can see in case somebody missed it all right here's another one ah, let me do it where you guys can see it there we go all right now i got three paper clips floating now when i take this 
fear and this doubt, like Peter, when he took his eyes off Jesus and he looked at the fear and he was scared of the storm, when I take this fear and this doubt and I put it in here, what happens to the paper clips? What happened to those paper clips? Are they floating anymore? No, they sunk, right? That's just like Peter. Peter couldn't float by himself. Peter couldn't walk on the water by himself. He needed Jesus to help him. Just like we can't do a lot of things by ourselves. We need Jesus to help us too, right? That was a pretty cool experiment, huh? I didn't know that paper clips could float on water. All right, so let's look back at verse 31 in our Bible. It says, then Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. And Jesus said, your faith is small. Why do you doubt? So Peter couldn't stand up on his own, just like this paperclip couldn't float on its own. It needed a helper, right? So uh, we can kind of think about that like, where's my paper? Oh, I'll put it in there. So this paperclip had to rest, rest on this one for it to be able to float. It had to rest on it, just like Peter had to rest on Jesus or trust Jesus, right? I had to trust that that paperclip was gonna help the other one float. So that's just like Jesus and Peter. Couldn't do it by himself. Now, I got a question for you. Have you ever tried to do something and you just couldn't do it? No matter how hard you tried? Yeah, me too. So let me ask you another question. Have you ever tried to do something and your mom or your dad said, hey, let me help you with that. Or let me show you how to do it but you didn't want them to help and you didn't want them to show you how to do it? Yep, me too. But then when you finally let them help, all of a sudden you could do it, right? Have you ever had that happen before? Oh, I should, I certainly have. Have your parents ever said, I told you so? Yeah, mine too. Mine said that a lot when I was a kid. In fact, my mom still says that to me today and I'm old. Um, so have they ever said, I told you so? Well, maybe they said, if you just did it the way I told you to the first time, then it would have been easier. Have you ever heard your parents say that? Yeah, me too. Well, that's kind of like what happened with Peter and Jesus. Peter thought he could walk on the water all on his own, but then he took his eyes off of Jesus and he started to doubt that he could do it. And that's when he sank. But when he let Jesus help or he rested on Jesus and trusted Jesus, just like this paper clip, that's when he was able to float and to walk on water, just like this paper clip. And you know what? That's what we do to God sometimes. We say, oh, it's okay, God, I can do this by myself. I can stop being scared or I can stop whatever I want. I don't need your help, but we do need, but do we need God's help? Of course we do. By ourselves, we can't do the impossible. Just like I thought it was impossible for my paper clip to float, that was impossible. It couldn't do it on its own. We can't do the we can't do the impossible by ourselves, just like that paper clip or walking on water. But if we rest on Jesus, if we have faith in him, he can help us do whatever we thought we could not do. Now, if doubt or fear comes in and steals our faith, that's when we sink, just like Peter. But when we have faith, it helps us believe with no questions that God is big and he is strong and he is mighty and that he can do anything. Now, how cool is that? I want you to remember this today. I want you to remember that um, if we have faith, whoops, that's not faith. If we have faith and we keep our eyes on Jesus, then we can get through anything. I promise. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for being a God who can do the impossible. God, you are big, you are strong, you are mighty, and we have faith, God. We have no doubts. We know in our hearts for sure, no questions, that you are God and that you can do anything. Thank you for that, Lord. You are an amazing, amazing God. I just pray for these kids this week. I pray that you would help them keep their eyes on you and that they would focus on you and that they would have faith in you and no doubts because God, I don't want them to sink. I want them to float. I want them to walk on the water just like you. 
Um, you're amazing, amazing, Lord. We love you so much. Thank you for Jesus and for what he did for us. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, I hope that came across okay on the video. Um, I hope you got to see those floating paper clips. That's a pretty cool um, experiment. I like it. And I love that this, did you see how just one drop of fear, one drop of doubt made those paper clips? I mean, sink fast. Pow! They just sunk right in the water. Just like Peter, when he took his eyes off Jesus, whoop, down he went. Um, so you remember that story. And like I said, Miss Maggie put the um, Matthew 14, 22 through 32 over on the side. So you guys can look it up later. Okay. All right. Now, thank you for joining the Bridge Kids break Bible break. But before I let you go, you know, I'm going to have an assignment. I always do. Um, all right. So this week, I want you guys to practice. I found this little um, thing and I think it's pretty cool. I want you to practice faith over fear. So that means I want you to focus on your faith, focus on the fact that you know with no questions that Jesus is who he says he is, that God is big and mighty and powerful and can do anything. And that is so much greater than our fear. It's so much bigger than our fear. So I want you to focus on your faith over your fear. And pretty soon when you have so much faith, you have no more fear. All you have left is faith. Okay. I want you guys to practice that this week. And I want you to look for some things this week. So I want you to send me a Marco Polo or text me or email me, or you can do a Facebook comment if you want on our page. Um, and I want you to tell me one thing that you have fear or doubt about. It could be anything. It could be storms. Remember that story I told you where I was so scared of tornadoes and storms. That was my fear. That was a huge fear. Um, and it made me doubt that that God would take care of me, but he did. He always takes care of me. So I need to, I needed to focus my faith, not my fear. So send me one thing you have a fear or a doubt about. And then I want you to tell me how you leaned on God or trusted God or rested on God. Like my paperclip, tell me how you rested on God to help you turn that doubt into faith. Now that's a lot of words, but what I want you to say is maybe you have something you're scared about. Maybe you read your Bible. And maybe that made you not as scared about it. Maybe that, maybe you prayed about it. Remember how I used to pray with the storms when I was so scared of them? Um, maybe you talked to your mom and your dad or your mom or your dad about it. Um, that's a good way to help us turn our fear into faith. That's a good way to help us have our faith is talk to our parents about it. Or you can talk to me about it. So I want to know one thing you're afraid of or that you have fear about, you have doubts about, and how you leaned on God, rested on God to turn that doubt into faith. All right. We want to turn all our doubts into faith. And we can do that by reading our Bible, by praying, by talking with someone who's older than us and who's wiser in the ways of God. All right. Now, if you send me a video message or a text or a Facebook, whatever, I will send you back and I will tell you mine. Okay, I will tell you what I'm afraid of or what I have been afraid of and how I leaned on God and trusted God. Um, also, parents, don't forget the grab and go lunches uh, are at Bear Creek High School today until one o'clock if you would like to take advantage of that. Um, they're there Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, 1030 to one. Um, and then there will be no Bible break on Friday, um, but Miss Maggie will see you on Monday and I will see you next Wednesday. Love you guys. Don't forget this week. Love God. Love others. Have a good attitude. Be a good helper. Okay. I know this is dragging out and I know you guys are tired and probably frustrated and ready to get back to school and ready to get back to our world. But that doesn't mean you get to have a bad attitude or not be a helper. So let's love God by loving others. Okay. Um, be Have a good attitude. Be nice to your siblings. Be nice to your mom and dad. Help your mom and dad. Okay. All right. I know you can do that. I love you guys. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. Um, again in person, but in the meantime, I'll see you next week. Okay. Go read those Bibles tonight. Tell me what, um, how you trust in God and turn your doubt into faith. I love you guys. Mwah.